In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Uh, today we remember St. George, a martyr of the church. Um, so I'd like to give a big shout out to George Vian, who is um, our sacristan. He's been serving us for quite some time. And uh, I just want to um, uh, give my thanks uh, to our, our friend and brother, George, uh, who has served us for so long. So as to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You have come to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call all sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Extolling your might, O Lord, we humbly implore you that as St. George imitated the passion of the Lord, so he may lend us ready help in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book Acts of the Apostles. When the court officers had brought the apostles in and made them stand before the Sanhedrin, the high priest questioned them. We gave you strict orders, did we not, to stop teaching in that name? Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and want to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles said in reply, we must obey God rather than men. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus, though you had him killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to grant Israel repentance and forgiveness of sin. We are witnesses of these things, as is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they became infuriated and wanted to put them to death. The word of the Lord. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Taste and see how good the Lord is. Blessed the man who takes refuge in him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the troubles of the just man, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. The Lord hears the cry of the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. The one who comes from above all, above is above all. The one who is of the earth is earthy and speaks of earthly things. But the one who comes from the heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. Whoever does accept his testimony certifies that God is trustworthy. For the one who God sent speaks the words of God. He does not ration his gift of the spirit. The father loves the son and has given everything over to him. Whoever believes in the son has eternal life, but whoever disobeys the son will not see life but the wrath of God remains upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. One thing that I was reflecting upon today is thinking about things that are above versus 
thinking about things that are below. And one of the things that the disciples had to face is that they didn't really understand Christ with all the things that he was preaching. Um, a lot of times they wanted physical evidence, you know, as we've seen with uh, doubting Thomas. Um, Thomas basically says, uh, uh, like any modern human being, that unless I see the holes in your in your body, I'm not going to believe you. And it's not his fault. It's it's the human condition of not being able to see the invisible. And St. Augustine talks about the visible and invisible reality of the Eucharist. Um, the challenge that the gospel gives us all the time is to understand Christ, to understand what he is saying and preaching to us. <clears throat> it's not an easy challenge. It's a challenge that requires us to be really attentive to the word of God, to really understand the deeper meaning of what is truly from above. Um, and I know that's not an easy thing to do. And yet the challenge is there. The challenge is us for us to really understand the words of Christ on a deeper level and on a higher level. Um, but it's a challenge that is necessary for our faith. Can you imagine if our faith were, were just simple facts and details, things that we can quickly understand? We'll forget about our faith. We'll forget about our Catholic uh, religion as a whole if it was that easy. The challenge is there because that's what moves us. You know, uh, even though we don't like challenges at the same time, we do seek challenges uh, without knowing. Imagine this, that the our faith is simply, you know, um, a foreseeable horizon where you know what the limits are. Um, our faith wouldn't last that long, let alone it doesn't require hope or belief because you can already see the end. The faith is endless. It's an endless journey. It's constantly going. And we don't know the ends because that's, that has something to do with hope. We hope in the impossible. We hope in the unforeseeable. Um, there's something to that in our faith. And when we hope and believe in things like hoping that we would be healed, hoping that um, someone that I love will change their ways into a life of virtue, hoping that somebody can love again. These are things to hope for. And our faith is endless. Our faith is challenging. Um, yeah, but because it is, it allows us to be in that state of hope and belief. Uh, it's actually a good thing that our faith is not finite, that our faith is infinite, that it's our journey towards the divine. And that's good news for us. A lot of times we hit stumbling blocks in our life where we think it's the end. Faith tells us, Jesus Christ tells us, that it's not the end. There are still things to come. you just begun. You know, um, one of the things that I remember uh, uh, my novitiate director is telling us is that when you choose to uh, commence in your faith, um, just by choosing, you've already finished 50% of that road. The next 50% is this endless journey of news, miracles, things that are going to heal you, things that will benefit you on an internal level. Um, so I invite you all to constantly push yourselves to study the word, to really understand, understand the saying, and that how he's so connected to our prophets and the Torah. So let us now offer our prayers to our God. For the church and her leaders, may God's grace fill them with strength, enthusiasm, and spread the Easter message. Let us praise the Lord. Position of authority throughout the world, may the Lord guide them in the ways of peace, justice, and conflict resolution. Let us pray to the Lord. For those burdened with physical, emotional, or mental pain, may God's loving grace heal them. 
Pray to the Lord. For those gathered here, may the Holy Spirit help us to focus our hearts on embracing Spirit. Help us to focus our hearts on embracing, nurturing our lives of faith. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of our brothers and sisters who have died, may God welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Today we remember the A.V. Cosby. I have also here prayers of Pope Francis during this time of the pandemic. In the coronavirus, we pray for care and healing. For those who are particularly vulnerable, we pray for safety and protection. For all who experience fear or anxiety, we pray for peace of mind and spirit. For affected families who are facing difficult decisions between food on the table or public safety, we pray for policies that recognize their plight. For the no family will face financial burdens alone. For those who are afraid to access care due to immigration status, we pray for recognition of the God-given dignity of all. For our brothers and sisters around the world, we pray for shared solidarity. For public officials and decision makers and guidance. Father, during this time, may your church be a sign of hope, comfort, and to all. Grant peace, grant comfort, grant healing. Be with us, Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray my Pray my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father May our prayers rise up to you O Lord together with the sacrificial offerings so that purified by your graciousness we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed, for he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the due passion. He took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, all the clergy and all those who serve. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. I'd like to read a prayer of spiritual communion uh, from our Holy Father. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things. I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to... Almighty, ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of the Paschal Sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>